All right, today we're going over the Rocker versus Thieves Embassy Search and Destroy that occurred today in the Stage 4 Qualifiers, the last day of Qualifiers. Uh, this was a super quick one, uh, but let's get right into it. All right, so we'll move into round number one. As you can see here, LA Thieves is going to be doing a default spread. Uh, you either have the fast B or default spread. That's the two main common offensive plays on this map. And they're just going to be sitting inside PD, trying to get as much info as possible on the defense without giving too much info on what they want to do themselves and then make a play mid-round. Uh, Minnesota, on the other hand, they're going to be doing a little counter B where they send uh, number two and number three over here to try and nade the cross uh, anywhere in this area to try and stunt any type of quick B push uh, by LA Thieves. And number four and number one, they're the two subs. They're going to be basically trying to hit out front palms to PD, uh, throwing their tacks on the way, again, to try and stunt any quick B push by LA Thieves. Uh, unfortunately for Minnesota right here, as you can see, Kenny is going to take a really quick timing bottom bath, and he's going to be able to find both Bance and Afro, kill them both. This uh, really has to do with the timing that he got off his spawn compared to the Minnesota guys, but also, you know, they they don't really have anyone that glances at this window to begin with. So, you know, if Bance, instead of just throwing, throwing his tack there, instead he glanced at the window, maybe he's able to at least trade this out with Kenny. Um, you know, we, they also had Fame. I believe he was watching top, though. Uh, but again, you know, a, a pretty big timing out of Kenny. He gets the an Institute piece, and that's like basically opens the round completely up. Number five here, that's Octane. He's going to see now that number two uh, was at A side, and he will also see number three. So he relays to his teammates, you know, last two at A side. Uh, they're going to bring the bomb towards B. Number A is going to push up. Um, and he's going to be able to get to top AC with this space that they now have. And then, as you can see here, number six, he's going to now play uh, this spot here. I'll fast forward it. Uh, but he's just going to be watching this back long cross to see if anyone rewraps back towards uh, the B side from, from long. Uh, Octane is now going to position himself to try and work with number six to team shot this uh, by going top paper. Um, and just to see if he can at least you know teamwork with six. He ends up getting the trade on number six as number two kills him. And from this point on, you know, Fame's in a basically an unwinnable situation with bomb down 1v3. All right, so moving into round two, LA Thieves with a basically standard uh, defense spread. They're gonna have one guy that goes top AC, one guy orange, one guy watching the cross uh, towards B, and then another guy P2 area, try and make any sort of play through PD um, and, you know, quick flank possibly, uh, depending on where the opponents are at. And Minnesota on their side, they're once again going to be playing a little standard default inside PD. And uh, number one here is actually just playing uh, basically to try and counter anyone that might be quick pushing through P2. And he actually gets a, a super nice first blood here. Afro gets it on Envoy. Uh, basically, you know, just stunting any type of quick flank on that end. And that was a really nice play out of, out of Afro. Uh, to, to pick that up because Envoy is obviously going to be one of the pincher uh, guys for the LA Thieves. And from this point on, you know, Minnesota is just trying to figure out what they want to do and what they want to work with. So they get the blood P2 side and they're thinking, you know, let's just all work together, wrap towards P2. Maybe we can get the A plant. Uh, unfortunately, though, Fame is top paper and with Draza rotating back from orange uh, to P1 here, he's actually going to win this fight on the AR top paper. And that, that's a huge kill uh, to rebound LA Thieves back into this round. And once that happens, the guy top AC also helped out A with this information that they got, um, thinking that you know Minnesota got that blood P2 side, so they, they could be wrapping. He ends up helping them out there. And from this point on, uh, Minnesota commits to this. And instead of you know taking it slower or wrapping it back to B, they just insta go for what their initial call was to go P2 to A. Unfortunately, Kenny is there. Uh, they line up for Kenny. He gets to moving into round three. This is going to be a quick B push out of LA Thieves. This is the other play that I was talking about. And uh, on the defensive side, number two and number three, once again, going to be nading this cross box to try and stun any quick B push. Number one is going to be looking at the cross here for them. And number four is going to be playing P2 and uh, eventually going to try and make a quick flank onto the LA Thieves B push. So as you can see here, the nades go and they end up connecting with the trophy. Uh, unfortunately, Draza's trophy does kill Envoy because of those nades uh, that exploded. As you can see here, uh, Fame is going to be hard playing for what Kenny did round one. So this is a little adjustment that you can see. 
uh, right away. Uh, he, you know, he's playing bottom orange, but he's playing for Kenny to try and, you know, quick peek through that bath like he did in the first round. Uh, unfortunately, he's not going to see anything, obviously. And although they got first blooded, Ellie Thieves is going to try and make a play here to try and balance the round out. As you can see, uh, number six draws it. He's going to be, you know, top papers trying to see if anyone is P1 or top AC. And he does find uh, Fame, who is trying to watch bottom bath. He communicates this with Kenny, and they just double team Fame here, bottom orange. Huge kill out of them. It was a really nice teamwork play with Draza and Kenny working together. And then Draza or Kenny is going to go for that quick plant. Draza is going to back up and go back PD and uh, just basically watch their pinch now. So number five, obviously Sam is watching over him to see if he can get this bomb down. They're able to get the bomb down. And from this, they're just going to be playing post plant. But as you can see here, Draza, he's top PD. He's going to see if or try and sniff out anyone pinching. He sniffs out Bance. Uh, Sam sees Cami top AC. From this, it's just a general post plant out of LA Thieves. Try and play your life, try and buy as much time as possible. Uh, Afro actually gets seen from number seven, uh, so they know where he is, so they know we're the last two alive. And, you know, uh, Cami actually gets a kill on number seven, but he does get trade up from Sam top PD. Uh, from this, Afro's just in a 1v2, and Draws is able to pick him up. All right, round four, we have an ultimate B bang out. We always love a fun round where everyone goes to the same site. Uh, from this, LA Thieves is just going to be basically hard countering Minnesota in this round. They're going to have two bottom orange. Um, and from this, one guy is going to bash the door open. One guy is going to chow. Good teamwork play out of LA, LA Thieves. One guy top AC. And one guy is going to go uh, front palms. Super hard counter. From this, Minnesota is going to be doing their fast B. Unfortunately, you know, this is just the hardest counter of all time to them. Um, they do get the trophies up so they don't get hit by the nades. Uh, but from this, as you can see, number six and number number eight, Envoy and Draza, one bashes the door, one chows. This is going to be at least a trade uh, for LA Thieves. And once you can see here, Kenny is going to have a free kill on number two. There's just too much for number two and number one to look at. Um, number four can't even get the kill on Kenny. Um, I, I don't believe he sees him at a good angle enough to, to get this kill. Uh, yeah, he, he can't even get the good angle. And as well, Sam is watching over him. So it, it, he can't get that angle on Kenny because there's a guy top AC. And this <laughs> this has all just become jumbled now. But now it's just a 3v1 for Cammy, And he, he just has absolutely no hope with Bomb down here. I actually kind of do just want to uh, mention how Kenny plays this uh, from the start. Uh, it's just really funny because what he does, he, he knows of the counter to this front palms and you know obviously someone taking this timing bottom bath like he did in round one versus Minnesota. So as you can see, he takes a little quick glance at it uh, before he chows. I just thought it was a really funny little glance at uh, a little counter play that he's trying to think of to his own play. All right, round four is a spread by LA Thieves and on the other side, Minnesota just got hit with the counter B so they're thinking, you know, let's just do it ourselves. They do the same thing to bottom orange, but instead of a guy from Palm, this guy's going to go back long, and then they have the top AC guy. Unfortunately for them, uh, LA Thieves are not going to be going B in this situation. They're going to send one guy uh, that stays planners while the other ones kind of work towards A side, but also just, you know, play back, just play info, see what they can get from from their positioning. So nothing is B side. So Minnesota is just going to have to adapt to the situation with their whole team B. And from this, they're just gonna be trying to wrap back towards A, go P1, try and cross or get any crosses that they can. Uh, from this, they're gonna leave fame uh, front PD. And I think this is just a really good read out of LA Thieves. You know, Minnesota, especially Afro, loves to play this front PD area. So they're probably just expecting it to be Afro, but it is fame in this situation. And number eight and number seven are just gonna teamwork this and teamwork anyone that might be front PD. You know, Minnesota has to respect uh, the map presence uh, A side because they didn't have anyone there at the start of the round. Um, so, you know, fame is just here. He just gets singled out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because, you know, Envoy dives, Kenny Chow's, it's a really nice teamwork play where both of them are activating at the same time. Uh, but, you know, Minnesota does a good job at bringing this back. You know, Bance is still P1, so he can get this trade on Kenny, which he does. Um, and then, you know, this is a really good teamwork play out of Minnesota where Bance is P1, but he also has, or sorry, Afro's P1, but Bance is also uh, top cat, and he can get 
the help on this kill as well. Uh, unfortunately for LA Thieves, they only think one is there, but what do you know, number four, Bance is able to pick up the possible trade that was going to go down. From this, it's a 3v2. It should be Minnesota's round to win. Uh, 3v2 with bomb down. And, you know, Envoy's going to be trying to sneak it a little here, back long. He's just crouching. Obviously, no dead silence yet. And, uh, you know, Octane is backing up. He's just, just waiting on Envoy to try and make a play here. Uh, he pops Deddy, but Cami is able to sniff him out, snipe him. From this, it's a 1v3 for Octane with bomb down. All right, moving on to the next round, another standard spread by Minnesota. You're gonna see this in a lot of rounds and a lot of pro play. And then a, a little different type of default by LA Thieves with one atop AC. Um, Envoy is actually gonna push up into this front PD uh, slash front cubby area, whatever you wanna call it. And just try and be a nuisance uh, for anyone that might be coming out bath or through the side PD door. You're gonna have one guy watching the cross B. I think Envoy was actually challenging it with him at the same time. And then Sam is going to be left A with the sniper trying to hold off anything that side. So he does see Cami cross this god box here uh, in his sniper. And uh, he's, he knows that it's not going to be a fast A from the info that he got from his teammates and from, you know, Cami crossing or fast B, I should say. Uh, so he's just going to try and keep playing for Cami at this god truck. He ends up getting the pick with the sniper. So it's, it's a huge first blood for, for LA Thieves. And Envoy, again, just being a nuisance here, he's going to be trying to nade top ED as he hears uh, the shots being fired from that window. And from this, you know, Minnesota is just playing inside PD, but they, they kind of get over eager as Kenny's able to get this good angle on Bance and kill him from the bath window. So, you know, they're just getting picked apart with these bloods, free bloods that aren't traded. Um, and, and, you know, LATs are just playing this super well with the angles that they're taking. And from this, it's a 2v4 for Minnesota, super hard. So, you know, basically have to retake everything. They don't know if someone pushed through P2. Uh, they're basically having to re-clear their entire PD. They don't know if, you know, anyone pushed through planner side. And from this, LA Thieves are just holding their ground, holding the crosses that they need to. And they're actually able to get a, a quick first blood onto Envoy because he turns his back and he's, it's not traded. Uh, draws it, ends up trading it, you know, with a gunfight at the planners. And then once, once you know, Fame 1v3, once again, uh, it's it's just a lost cause with the bomb down over there. And, you know, 18 seconds left. This is a round one for LA Thieves. All right, we're headed to the last round. And this is just where Minnesota's woes just continue. And, you know, this round specifically just stood out to me as just being some completely disjointed. They probably had lost full being down 5-1. Uh, but I don't know. It didn't really look like they were on the same page at all during this round. So as you can see here, LA Thieves going with the quick... Uh, B push, uh, they have the trophies down, they're crossing, have Octane, uh, Wallbang, Orange, so any fast Orange hits are completely countered uh, on the defensive side. And they're just going to get a, a two B bomb quick and try and get that bomb planted. Once again, they had number three and number two hitting those nades, but with the trophies, um, it, it's just a lost cause. And then, you know, number four is trying to tag them up on the cross too. Uh, they're not able to get anything um, and, and then number one here. He's going to be hitting quickly through PD uh, He changed uh, the way that they were doing or it's a different player because it was Bance last time this time It's afro as you see draws is trying to pick up uh, that back lane like he did in the in the round previous uh, But this time they're going through PD through the hallways to try and flank uh, and once you're you know obviously get this bomb down you're gonna try and you know get any sort of flankers from getting inside your PD so that you have the best chance in a post plant. So as you can see here, Minnesota, they're like, they know that it's a fast B and they're, they don't really like wait for each other. I see Bans hitting up mid here, but he's not, you know, with anyone on his team. After number three, and number two hit their nades, you know, number two is going to go to top AC, but you know, he's not, he's on the way, but he's not in the play with them. So number four gets caught out right from front palms from someone holding uh, the sign here. And number one's just trying to make a play. You know, he gets a kill Afro, but I would have loved to have Bance, you know, maybe wait a little bit before making a play so that Afro can engage first, you know, try and make that distraction right away. Planner side, so maybe he can get number eight that could be turning for Afro to try and get the trade over there. But it just seems like everyone's too spread apart during this retake for Minnesota. LA Thieves is going to be able to get the bomb down. You know, fortunately for LA Thieves, 
Uh, they probably should have just planted safe here uh, because Minnesota eventually is able to have a chance at winning this round because of where the bomb is planted. And as you see there, Afro gets the kill, Envoy turns to him. So that's what I was talking about before. And uh, Cami hits long. He's able to get the kill on Envoy. So the trades do go down. It's a 2v2. And, you know, Cami sees this. He, he can hop on the bomb from this side. And, you know, that's not protected from top PD. You always see p players playing top PD to try and counter any defuse because they're playing or they're planning safe for the most part. Uh, but once this is planted on the other side, it's a little weird and awkward for LEDs because now they have to basically have number seven check it. Um, and they have fame top AC and Cammy's going to hop on this right away because he, he realizes and fame is watching over him. Uh, but then he, you know, he jumps down. I don't know. Maybe if he stayed, he would have been able to kill Kenny, but Kenny is able to see uh, this gap anyways and able, is able to take it. They end up winning the round from this. Uh, but, you know, maybe if Fame had stayed on, it could have happened. But from this 2v1, uh, Fame is just not going to win this round. And LED takes this 6-1 victory. Uh, really nice plays out of them for the most part in this search.